Hey everybody, this is Scholar Junior Mojian Dan Bing. Today I'm going to be reviewing the new LK Chen Taiyang Yiling Dao. One thing that I think is important for you to know is that I was sent this sword to make a review about it, but I'm not, I didn't buy it with my own money, but I also I'm going to be sending it back after I make my video. So you can do with that what you will, but let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is talk about the history of the piece and you know, what is, how accurate is it, what is it actually like back then. And then we'll go into, you know, how it handles, how it cuts, all that good stuff. Now, Yenling Dao literally means goose quill saber or goose feather saber. And it describes a saber type where you have, you know, it's pretty straight and then it slightly curves down at the tip a little more. And in English speaking countries, we also call this a Yen Dao. But in China, that almost everybody says Yenling Dao. There is one big difference between these two terms, which is that you can find Yenling Dao in like historical sources dating back to the Ming Dynasty, whereas the term Yen Mao Dao appears to be more modern. So this blade is a like a one-to-one -one recreation of a sword owned by Peter Decker that's held in his private collection. Now Peter Decker is a famous Asian weapons and armor researcher as well as antiques dealer. And one thing about antique dealers is that you know, a lot of times they like to keep the best swords for themselves. So that's, I think that's also true for this sword too, because this sword is really cool and I can see why, you know, someone like Peter wouldn't want to give up the original. <laughs> okay, Chen has chosen to call this the Taiyang Yanling Dao. Taiyang basically just means like the sun, the sun in the sky. And okay, Chen has chosen to call it that because it has a few, you know, it has a sun motif kind of hidden in the fittings. And yeah, let's talk about those fittings. The first thing you notice about these fittings is that they're pretty square. And this is what's called the Fang Shi or square style. Some people also call it the angular style because of all the angles. These fittings are cast iron, so they're really strong and sturdy. The grip itself is also completely square. Some people might think that's uncomfortable, but actually, you know, the grip wrap is really tight and there are angles, but it's it's actually really nice and comfortable. And I really like the feeling of the Fang Shi. Now we have a pin or a rivet that goes through the tang of the blade and secures the handle onto the blade. On this rivet, it's fancy because for one, it has a hole through it for a lanyard. And for two, it has a nice like sun style copper alloy fitting. One thing I'll say is that I actually really like this lanyard because it's very usable. There's a lot of lanyards that are on swords where if you try to actually use it as a lanyard, it's not going to work very well it will be coming apart or you know all kinds of other problems but this one is very functional very practical and you know if you drop your sword then you still have it and it hasn't you haven't lost it you can just pick it right back up also you notice that the guard of the husho has these ridges around it which is one more element of this sword that fits into kind of this sun motif so we have our rivet through the tang and then we also have our guard looking kind of like a sun so the last sun element can actually be found on the scabbard of the sword so this scabbard is a wooden core wrapped with faux leather and it has these square fittings. And then you'll notice that the tiliang or this bar that holds the two strings that will attach to your belt, it actually has these copper or, you know, copper alloy rivets holding on to that bar, which is one more little element that's supposed to invoke the sun. So let's move on to the blade, which is extra special. This blade is interesting because we have these two folders. One terminates about here. The other one continues up just to a few inches shy of the tip. And additionally, we also have this false edge. Now this false edge is not sharpened, but with enough, you know, determination, <laughs> you could easily sharpen it yourself. And um, even if it's not completely sharp, it still allows for a very good thrust. And even though, you know, the point is not completely in line with the center of the grip, you could still, this is very much a thrusting weapon. And people, I think, sometimes underestimate um, the ability of sabers to thrust. One element of this blade that I really love is that it's a little bit narrow here and actually swells out and widens slightly, just barely perceptibly, and then it kind of tapers out into the point. And what that does is it just, you know, adds just a little more beef into the, you know, cutting portion of the blade so you get those nice cuts. In addition, this sword also has a very respectable degree of distal taper, and the steel is, you know, classic of LK Chun. The steel is this forged folded steel, which has a nice pattern to it. Now, this sword is a one-to-one -one replica of an antique. So as far as historical accuracy goes, it's pretty much there. But one thing that I need to say is that the base version that you can buy has this forged folded blade. And that forged folded blade is actually not the same kind of steel blade that would be on the antique. So on the antique, you would have folding, but you would also have lamination. So you would get harder steel 
and you'd wrap it around a softer steel. That kind of construction, you can you can get that from LK Chun, but it's going to cost more. So just be aware of that going in. If you want the most historical blade steel, or a more historical blade steel, then you should go and you know you're going to want to spend a little bit more money because it's not feasible for anybody to make a laminated blade in a you know, sub 300 price range or even sub 400 or 500 price range really. So let's talk about how this sword feels and I just gotta say as a doll practitioner this feels really nice because it's really, it's, you can definitely feel it. it has it wants to cut, right? It's really good at cutting but at the same time it's light and pretty nimble and that's because it has this distal taper, has these fullers even though it does have those features, it still is just over 900 grams, so it's you know well within the historical range for Tao. Another thing is that the blade length of this sword is just over 27 inches, which I really like because it's not too long, and a lot of swords nowadays on the market will tend to get really close to the historical limit of how long a lot of swords were in the past, or the average historical sword, but this one is like well within historical range, and um, I just... It feels good and fast, and it cuts well at this length, so I, I really like it. Alright, so as you can see, right out of the box, this sword is able to, you know, slice and dice bottles, and it's a lot of fun to use and swing around. And if you'd be interested in getting one, then check out the link down in the description below. As always, thank you all for watching, and stay sharp.